In this tutorial, I will show you how to linearize a nonlinear data set. If you recall, in an earlier video, I showed um, a graph that would be produced when we took various position, uh, starting positions as an object was moving through time. If we take a look at our different graphs here, what we would see here is that um, if I wanted to look at the graphs, we could see all these different graphs at once. Okay, and if I auto scale them, we will see that we have this data all over the place. Now, for example, let's say we took a look at graph one. We would see that graph one is already in a linear position. So there's not much to do to this. It's already linearized, meaning the data is following a linear pattern, meaning it's going up at the same rate every time as time goes on. So basically the position is increasing by the same amount uh, as time goes by. However, that's not the case with all the graphs. For example, if I looked at the second graph here, position two, and I looked at the data for it, I see that this is going up on what appears to be a half of a parabola, which from the previous lesson we would have recognized is a squared type of relationship. Just to prove it to you, we'll go to curve fit, and we said the way you find a squared graph is you go to power, uh, or variable power, I'm sorry, set it to the two, hit try fit, and see if it works. Now that wasn't to the two, that was to the 0.5. All right, my number lock is on again. All right, so I will backspace it and put in a two and I'll hit try fit. And we see that indeed that that does work. What that tells me then is that the position is increasing as the time is squaring. Okay, um, so what that means, that's what we're saying here, the position is increasing with the time squared factor. So to linearize data, it's actually kind of easy once you use Logger Pro to identify the relationship. And in fact, what we need to do to make this linear is that if somehow we were able to plot position versus time squared, that should come out as a linear relationship. And we can do that easily by going back over to our data and inserting a new calculated column. Now what this calculated column will do is it's going to give us a new parameter that we could put on the x axis. And in this case, we said that the position was actually proportional to the time squared. So I'm going to actually write the words time squared here. Now, on the short name, because of calculation purposes, we need to shorten this. So we're going to call it t squared. Now, there's a couple ways to do it. You could do t with a caret 2. However, the programming doesn't really like multiple characters. So instead, what we can do is give it this t of property, and that property would be a superscript of 2, meaning it has a 2 uh, above the t, t squared, as we see right here. Now, if the time was typically a second and we squared it, well, then we, in essence, have a second squared. So we would say, okay, our time squared is going to be t squared, and then its units would be second squared. Now, we also learned from spreadsheets that we can perform massive calculations if we were just to define this. Now, the way we're going to define it then is we are going to take the time variable that was in our data table over here. And what's important is that you looked over here. Those were our variables that were measured or the columns that they were in. If I click on this, we can find time in the list. And you'll notice it put it in quotation marks. This is extremely important. If you were to just manually type time without the quotation marks, it would tell you, I don't understand what you mean. Um, so we need to put the quotation marks to say what column it's specifically looking for. And we have to spell it exactly the way it was spelled over here. So a lowercase t would not work. Um, all caps for t-i-m-n-e would not work. It has to be done exactly this way. And we said that this expression is supposed to be time squared. So basically, we're going to put a uh, caret and a 2 saying that we are going to square this parameter of time or variable of time, I should say. And then we hit done. And now what it's done is it's created a column over here that's t squared. It hasn't done anything to our graph because we haven't told it we wanted to change. So what we would do is we're going to remove this curve fit here. And instead, now we're going to plot time squared. And if we do that and we take a look, we have ourselves a nice linear relationship. And if I went now, here's the short keys. I could also go to Analyze and Linear Fit, but I'll show you this while we're at it. This button here is the Linear Fit button uh, shortcut. So if I click on it, we see that it, in fact, is a linear fit. And this would be the equation that we would use in Logger Pro. All right. So the idea here is that basically when you're linear fitting it, you run a curve fit, see what type of curve it is, and see what you need to do to the time. So we'll do this again. This time looking at a different graph. Now, on the other graphs that we had here, so we'll go back to time. 
we'll go back to this the graphs that we had here and we'll look at number four four was an inverse this is not linear but we can linearize it now according to our linear relationships it says that it would be well let me show you analyze curve fit we choose inverse right here we hit try fit we hit OK and it says here that X is a function of time in the denominator or basically X is going to be um, a function of 1 over time so that means that we're going to create a new column where we have time in the numerator so what we do is we go to data and we make a new calculated column and we will call this 1 over time or probably better to say time to the negative one power um, actually we can't put negative one as a subscript there so we would say um, time to the negative one this way because it won't let us type it in okay and for the short name we might prefer to call it one over t again because we can't use negative one as one of our exponents um, our units then would be one over seconds or we could put seconds to the negative one and we said the way this would be done is it's actually going to be the inverse of the time so we do one divided by we choose our variable of time and we've defined a column of time to the negative one power now again we can't see the graph here because it's not told to plot that we said that the position is going to be a direct relationship or a proportional to the inverse of the time not the time so we simply click on this find time to the negative one auto scale it and we see that we indeed found that linear fit again so if I clicked on my linear fit we do have a relationship that shows oops missing the box here that does show what the values that we have over here would be all right hopefully you learned a little bit about linearizing data I will show you how to interpret this in class but as you try to linearize data sets this is how we do it